you were much more you know committed plugged in oh, yeah. you made the decision and you dove in head first yeah and and yeah so did gin's deal and that was good and then the wheels fall off fell off of that so i had monster that was that that was my pe- they were they were my people still today we're we are partners and i'll forever be thankful i've been with them since basically the inception of monster energy yeah uh, 2004 or 5 i think and um uh everything went sideways again and that ended and then i got an opportunity monster's like hey what do you want to do the next year and then uh, i ended up doing the east series and i i rode for i drove for schrader it was freaking awesome, man. I love that dude. T- time out though. What happened again? What what went sideways again? The whole yeah, the whole the thing whole it went fell up in. Yeah, yeah, I think I think Bobby I think Bobby's <laughs> investor why? said, "Hey, um, we're out of money. We're, <laughs> we're out of money, and we're going to quit giving you money if you don't sell this race." I don't remember. Team. I, that's how Gin ended. He huh? had the resorts right, and he was oh, funding right. all. He was buying and funding everything, and they were like, "Hey, man, we're this is not going to work financially. You got to stop." So he had to. That was it. Racing ended. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's so right. you went to Schrader. Went to Schrader, and I ran the East Series, and uh, did pretty well. Did pretty well. Got a pole at South Boston. I can't remember what I got overall in the series, but the crazy thing was the the dudes that I was racing at the time, Austin Dillon, mm. Trevor Bain, <laughs> Jeffrey, um, I want to say Almarolo was in there. Probably was he for the DEI's uh, development. Yeah, I, I actually right. flew up and met with DEI one time with Mark. I flew up and we we're gonna because I had the monster money, and um, we had a meeting. And uh, anyhow, it didn't, obviously yeah. it didn't work out. And it, I'm I'm glad that I drove for Schrader because it was just I, I had a, a oh. hell of a time. It was oh. so much fun and I learned a lot. Yeah. I felt like he gave me so much advice that I could bring along. So. Race the East Series. That would have been 2008, I believe. Yeah, 2008. And I'm sitting in Charlotte Airport, and I get a call from Kevin Harvick. And he says, <laughs> hey, man, uh, what's happening next year? I've been watching you on the East Series, and I ran good at Loudon too. I think it was shortly after Loudon. I think I got fourth at Loudon that year. And um, he says, what are you doing next year? He says, we'd love to have you drive for, for our truck team. I'm like, man, that's awesome. So I contact Monster, and we fly out, or we meet with with everyone at uh, KHI, and they say, hey, this is what it's going to take for the full year, but this is what we think you need to do. And uh, I ended up running a partial schedule, and, um, yeah, that was it. That was it. So after that, that was 2009, after that, they're like, hey, this is what it's going to cost to run the next year full time. So that would have been 2010, 2011. And uh, Monster's like, well, we we just have this much, so you need to you need to figure out what you're going to do with this much. We'd really like to see you in the full series. So this at this time now, Steve Turner starts a, a race race car team, mm-hmm. and um, he was going to be in alliance with KHI and. Kevin hooked me up with him, says, hey, he'll run you the full series for the money that you have. And Mm -hmm. then I went and we did a two-year deal there with with Steve, which Steve was always great to me. And um, it was a great experience for sure. And that's uh, basically that was how that got going. Went good, did some good things, ran ran good, some good, good at some places. I think the highlights of it is I got fourth at Talladega, fourth at Dover. I got the pole at Atlanta, led a bunch of laps at Martinsville. I absolutely loved Martinsville uh, because of the timing, you know, on the brakes, off the brakes, gas. It really brought me back to, to Supercross yeah. and having to be, have that precision and timing and braking. And if you didn't break right or didn't let off right at the right time, you paid consequences, you know, there are consequences as you yeah. know. So this is what gets into the next fun thing. Um, at the end of my two-year deal at Turner, um, Monster comes to me and says, hey, we're going to sponsor Kyle Busch's nationwide team. I'm like, all right. And then they're like, we want you to be the driver of the, uh, the, the races that he doesn't do. So however many Xfinity races there was at the time, let's just say, well, how many are there no- normally, Dale? 
Xfinity in, races. In a, in a full season? Yeah. 36. 36. 36. So he was going to do, let's just say, 13 for KBM, somewhere around there, and I was going to do the remainder. And uh, I'm like, man, this is an incredible opportunity. Got a great mentor. Guy knows how to drive. Everything's good. We're sitting in uh, a parking lot. My manager and I, now my best friend, he does all my stuff now. And he's um, talking with Rick Wren and I'm like, okay, had all the financials set and allowances, blah, 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 and the plan. And this is Friday, the morning of the truck race, the fall truck race at Texas. And he says, fly, it, we'll, uh, fly up to Charlotte on Tuesday and we'll sign this thing. Perfect. So... So it's done. I mean, like this thing is yeah. done. You're, now you're figuring out when signatures and announcements are yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah, we. I'm flying up here Tuesday mm. to sign. To be done. Yeah. That 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 night at the truck race, Kyle spins horn out and under caution Texas. laps. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Ron Hornaday dust, the, the major one. Oh yeah. So Sunday or Monday might have been. They they call and they're like, hey can't come up to can't come up let's wait there's a lot of moving parts not sure Kyle's busy Kyle's busy what's monster gonna do is monster gonna step in if Mars pulls out you know I mean I'm sure you guys heard all everything happening and so I'm like oh man so anyhow oh that's right because Mars was threatening to pull out of the whole smash like the cup everything Kyle was effectively trying to fight for his career at that point yeah 100 percent after one weekend that's right yeah that's right. So anyhow, wheels get back on track. So <laughs> we're going to Homestead. Everything's good. We're like shooting high fives, right? And, that, and I think I think Kyle wrote, raced the truck race that that night at Homestead, and like, hey, fly up on Wednesday. Um, you know that way it'd give us a chance to do the Xfinity banquet and the truck bank banquet down there. I'm like, okay, no problem, and. Uh, so Sunday, if you go back, this is when uh, Kurt was driving for Penske. Yep. And he well, had he had that issue with Doc Punch. Yes. He cussed Dr. Jerry Punch out. He blew, blew the engine of his car last race of the year, gets out in the garage, and they're waiting on the interview to come live. Dr. Jerry Punch is waiting on the booth to send it down to him, and he's like, hey, Kurt, sorry for holding you up. And Kurt just starts chewing his tail. It's so unlike it's all Kurt. on video. You think that piece you have come out of your transmission with the wind grill? You were in front of uh, that. Just, that just makes me feel a lot better, Doctor. Can you get this motherfucker out of my face? I haven't even seen the it video. It sucks for you. Doc. Have it? It's, it's worth it. You it feel sucks. Is it? Yeah. It sucks. For, you feel terrible for Doctor Jerry Punch. Yeah. It it was Kurt at his lowest. He might have actually been lower, lower at certain points, but <laughs> it, was, it was him at the at the end of his rope there. So, as you can imagine, I mean, now that you guys know what happens now, but so I get another one of those calls on Monday. He's like, hey, can't come up Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Groundhog Day over here. It's like, okay. No, wait a second. You are fair to ask, though, this is the— this is not the right bush, so I, why am I worried about yeah, this? Yeah, but why I kind of had, like, so Penske fires Kurt on Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tuesday, let's say, Monday or Tuesday, anyhow. He gets fired. Okay. Or released, rather. And um, they call me. I'm the next call. And uh, they're like, hey, um, we're not, don't come up Wednesday. There's some things that are going down, and um, we'll get back with you. I'm like, all right. And as soon as as soon as he got released, I knew exactly what was going to happen. They were going to hire him. I mean, it's yeah. his brother. I, mean, I don't know, and, and he's better. I would have still thought it was a coin flip because I'm not. They may be brothers, but they didn't always like each other. Well, but at the same time, I know Monster likes to win, and yeah. I know Kyle does, and and Kurt's a hell of a lot better driver than I am, way more accomplished. So the, the writing was on the wall. I wasn't stupid, and I I, I appreciate Monster even considering me to be a part of that program yeah. when, when, from the inception. But as soon as that – so anyhow, long story short, a few weeks went by, and they, they called me. Uh, my boss at Monster called me and says, hey, man, this is, this is the route we're going to go and blah, blah, blah. And, I'm, and I was totally understandable. So at that point on, boom, I was dusting the wind. 
my my four wheel career ended boom just like that. Right, like that. You yeah. were almost in this car. One of the for one a, of, it was going to be a two year deal. One of the one of the better cars in the series. Mm. And I have a question for you. Yeah, I was going to be in that as a two year deal. Yeah. And um, it's going to be fun, man, because, like, Danico is coming up. And, like, I remember, like, Monster's like, dude, if you could just run with her, I think it's a it's a cool story. You two are kind of on the same progression, and you're coming from this complete – you're then in this end of the spectrum, she's coming from there. There was a story within the race. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I want to ask you, had I went there and it worked out, and it being a startup team, do you think that it – it would have given me everything that I needed or what I've been better at a more established organization. Well, I think that, you know, Kyle's, Kyle's team at the time was, uh, you know, so Kyle would run his own car and then Kyle would run Gibbs stuff. And you could then very very easily kind of compare where Kyle's personal team was versus the cars that Gibbs could provide him. You could see a, a, a difference in, in how far, KBM had to go to get where they wanted to be. They eventually shut down his Xfinity program for whatever reason. Uh, but I, had he maintained that program, I think that he would have similar success as JRM. You know, he would be, he could have maybe even became the Joe Gibbs Bush, you know, outfit where Joe's drivers would drive for Kyle's team. Um, and maybe Kyle envisioned that happening one day, but you would have, uh, you know, you would have probably not. It was it wasn't the very best car, but it was a top ten car, uh, you know. And Kyle could get in it, and you could see how you know where he was dominant, literally almost a lock to win in Joe's car. He would drive his car the next week, and everybody could run with him, and you could beat him. You know that was the difference in, in 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 his team at the time. So I don't know how that would have worked out for you. I really don't. Yeah. You know that might have been a good experience. It might have been it might have been a frustrating one or a difficult one. They only won and they only won one race that yeah, year. Yeah, I think with Richmond, Kurt, right? Kurt at Richmond. Yeah. And Kurt's way better driver well, than I am. What's um, interesting is probably the difference in expectations. I would imagine Kyle would have an expectation regardless of your inexperience or whatever, but like if, you know, he wants to win. Yeah. Monster said they just want you to beat Danica. Is that what you that I mean that's said? that's like, that that's kind of what I got like out I of it. I don't think that really matches up well. Like th- those two things. I don't know how Okay. Yeah, like Monster's expectations and Kyle's and expectations, Kyle's. Yeah. right. Right. Yeah. I you know, I I don't know. I I it's shocking though. I mean, how did you That's how did you what did you do? Like, I think a lot of people in the in y'all's world always wondered, like, man, what what happened? Right. And like, even even in my world, people's like, what what? Why'd you quit racing? That's right. You know. And this is the first place I've. This is the first time I've ever really told the story. You know, uh, across the air, and 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 you know, it's been so long now. But so the next season, yeah, it was. But I'm di- I'm done. Right. So it- then, I'm just hanging out. But, you, you, but I had Brandon – so and to this day, I'm still – I'm a brand ambassador for a lot of my sponsors. Still Monster, Fox, the apparel company that uh, I always wore their gear. I'm, I'm a, an ambassador for them, Triumph Motorcycles now. At the time, I was still busy with Suzuki um, being an ambassador for them, riding the, their race bikes and testing and development, things, things, things like that, dabbling a little bit at the Supercrosses and the TV – but hold on a second. You were done because you didn't have any other opportunities no. there. However, it's fair to say that you got a lot of opportunity. I mean, like people were calling you up. Why is Casey Kane even calling you up to offer a late model at the time? Why are these people doing that? And so you had all these opportunities. Now you don't. So how hard did you beat down the drum and the, and knock on doors to go try to find another ride? I didn't because I'm not that kind of guy. I, I, I'm horrible at asking someone for, hey, man, will you? Will so you, you didn't even go to Monster and say, I know y'all are doing this thing with Kurt and, and, but you know, is there any opportunity for me to be anywhere? I mean, I may have, but yeah. I don't, I don't, I knew like they, they just said, Hey, what was your, I got to ask you like yeah. out of all of the things that you did race in the late model in, and, mm-hmm. you know, in, in Florida trucks, when did you have the most fun behind the wheel? 
Uh, like what card in, in did the, you in the E series and the Xfinity series? You enjoyed those cars. Yeah, I loved. I always felt like I did better in the cars than I did in the trucks. Yeah. I think the way that they were shaped, aero. I mean, I go back to the truck series and the guys that I was having to race: Hornaday, Skinner, Bodine. I mean, you name them. Good I mean, the, I mean, those guys are aces, man. They raced in the Cup Series, and then now they're racing the Truck Series. And I'm, I have literally zero four wheel experience, right. and I've grew up on dirt my whole life, and I don't know anything about aerodynamics. And as soon as I figured out aero and how to pass and when to when to use it to your advantage, it was too late. It was like the last half of the year of, of the Truck Series, and I was at that point it was it was over. Yeah. But I, I liked the Xfinities. I, I liked those cars. I felt comfortable in those cars. And then and then the uh, the E Series was a lot of fun as well. If you like that conversation with Ricky Carmichael, you ought to listen to the entire podcast. The Dale Jr. Download is available on all major podcast platforms.